So about two weeks ago, I received probably one of the world's first ever retail versions of the Sony a7 IV after paying full price for it out of my own pocket. And most of you have probably already seen most of the initial reviews and the specifications, etc. So I'm not going to bore you with going over that once again. Instead, I want to tell you about five things that I found that Sony isn't telling you about the brand new Sony a7 IV. So let's start with the first item. One of the features that makes the A7S III so great in low light is its dual gain ISO sensor. Essentially this means that the sensor has two base ISOs where the image is the cleanest instead of just one. Now Sony isn't marketing the A7 IV to be dual gain because that's a fairly high end feature and this is technically Sony's full frame entry level camera. But let's do an ISO test, shall we? So here I'm going over the different ISO levels in Super 35, recording in 4K, 10-bit, 4-2. Now I've also underexposed these shots on purpose and then in post boosted them up by plus 5 exposure. So this is essentially a very exaggerated example. But now as you can see when we jump from ISO 2500 to 3200, we can see that the image actually gets cleaner when we jump to 3200. Now I'm not entirely sure if this is because of an actual dual gain sensor inside of the body or that there is just something else going on, but whatever it is, it does seem to be that there is some sort of dual gain ISO sensor inside of this thing. Now to be clear, the difference isn't as big as on the dual gain sensor on the A7S III. You see a much bigger difference there in noise performance when you jump between ISOs. Um, the difference is a lot smaller on this guy, but there is still a difference nonetheless. So for that reason, if you're shooting in low light, I would recommend shooting at 3200 or up, but avoiding 2500 because you will actually get cleaner results when you shoot at 3200. Now secondly, the A7 IV comes back with the fairly new Bions XR processor, which is also found in the Alpha 1 and the Alpha 7 S3. Because of this, the Alpha 7 IV has the new Sony menu system. And while a lot of people think that this is purely a user experience improvement, which it also is for sure, it also brings a lot of new features to the table, which up until now were exclusive to the flagship cameras. For example, in the menu under shooting, shooting display, you can find emphasize recording display, which will light up the border of the display red during recording, which is much easier to see at a glance than the tiny record. So because the a 7 IV can shoot 10-bit 4 to 2, if you want the most dynamic range out of your footage, you're probably going to be shooting in S-Log3. S-Log3, however, has the disadvantage of looking like crap when you're actually using the camera. Because everything looks so flat and grey, it can be really hard to expose and focus and compose your shot correctly because it's just hard to see what's going on. But this is where the gamut assist comes in. If you turn it on in the menu, your camera will basically apply a built-in LUT to in real time convert your preview to a Rec. 709 color space so that you can actually look at normal colors and see what you're doing while still recording an S-Log3 to your SD cards. So I highly recommend that you turn this feature on because it means that you will never have to look at the crappy S-Log3 colors ever again. Now thirdly, as most of you probably know, the A7 IV comes with two card slots. One of which is an SD card slot and the other one is a CF Express Type A slash SD card slot. So the primary one actually supports both types of cards. Now there is no doubt about it that CF Express Type A is much faster than even the faster types of SD cards out there. And, some, and because of this, some of you might think that you actually need a CF Express Type A card if you want to shoot at the highest end recording mode, which is 4K 60 all intra at 600 megabits per second. And you wouldn't be crazy to think that because on the A7S III, if you want to record 4K 120 in all intra, you do actually need a CF Express Type A card. You cannot do that on an SD card. But on the A7 IV, that is not the case. Even on the highest end recording mode, you can still get away with just using an SD card and you don't really ever have to use a CF Express Type A card. Now to be clear, if you want to use the highest end recording mode, you do need V90 UHS-2 cards, which are still fairly expensive, but they are way cheaper still than a CF Express Type A. So just save yourself some money and just get yourself some SD cards. Now in fourth place, one of the features that is actually premiering in the a7 IV is USB-C streaming. Basically, you just plug in your camera into your computer through USB and your computer will recognize it as a webcam. No additional software needed. In the menu of the camera, you can then set the resolution and frame rate of the USB-C stream. Really cool. However, for some reason, when I want to go anything higher than 720p 30, I get an error that my USB connection is too slow. 
Now this is despite my MacBook being perfectly within spec of USB 3.2. I also tried this on the modern Windows laptop but with the exact same issue. So maybe I'm an idiot and doing something wrong but it looks like there might be a firmware issue here on the camera and hopefully Sony will fix this in the future. To be clear though, 720p still looks way better than any webcam out there. Now lastly, I would like to inform you that the a7 IV does not come with a charger in the box, only a USB-C cable. With the idea of you charging the camera through USB inside of the camera, but this is of course a nightmare if you have multiple batteries. Now the reason that I'm bringing this up is because chargers are included in the A1, the A7S3, the A7R4, etc. But those are higher end cameras, so Sony probably isn't including it in the a7 IV to save some money because this camera is cheaper. Also some people say that the reason that they don't include it is to save the environment because a lot of people already have these batteries, but that just doesn't make any sense because this is Sony's entry level full frame camera. So this is essentially their entry level camera to use these bigger batteries and I don't really understand who would have a charger already if they're buying this camera because I definitely didn't have one. Thankfully though, there are many great third party options, so you can also just save a buck and pick one of those up like I did. Now I have one more bonus point that I would like to make, and that is that if you get the a7 IV right now during the first batch, you will not be able to open or edit your raw files in Lightroom or Photoshop as Adobe still hasn't updated its camera raw software to support the raw files coming out of this camera. Now I know that this is the case with any new camera coming out, but this is definitely something to keep in mind that if you pick up this camera, don't sell your old camera just yet because that might be a major hurdle for you if you can't access your raw files. The reason that I have this as a bonus point though is that this should just be a temporary problem and should hopefully be fixed in the near future. Hopefully. Adobe, please fix it. So there you go guys, that is my 5 plus 1 things that Sony didn't tell you about the a7 IV. Now if you have any more questions about this camera, just make sure to leave a comment down below and I will be more than happy to answer all of your questions and I might even make a follow-up video. Alright, that's it. See you in the next one. Peace.